The 2016 Democratic nominee, Hillary Clinton, returning to the DNC with, well, some unfinished business, this time pushing for Vice President Kamala Harris to break the highest hardest glass ceiling. My panel is back with me. Also joining us, comedian and host of the upcoming CNN comedy series, Have I Got News for You, Roy Wood Jr. Oh, does it come with a wink, too? Is that part of the show? Maybe, maybe. We'll oh. see. I'm working on my charisma. Uh <laughs> Your ribs. Yeah, I, It's ribs. I know. What are you talking about? With the skibbity. Okay, I'm old. Well, I'm, okay. I'm skibbity, I'm hippity sigma, hopper. alpha, and that's all I know. I'm, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out what demure means. Oh. Uh, <laughs> As a prosecutor, Kamala locked up murderers and drug traffickers. She will never rest in defense of our freedom and safety. Donald Trump fell asleep at his own trial. And when he woke up, he made his own kind of history, the first person to run for president with 34 felony convictions. I mean, Roy. Hillary got some unfinished business. <laughs> Revenge served cold. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought it was really cool as well that she kind of held back when they started chanting, lock him up. Mm. Yeah. Because she really could have, like, just as a comedian, you could just really go down that road and really <laughs> dig in. But to keep the poise, to keep it about the moment in hand, to keep it about what was happening in the moment, in the now for the party, Classy, but she she gonna get a lick back. Oh she yeah, she is not forgotten. You know what she should say when they say lock him up. She said, "Listen, I'm probably going to let the courts handle that. What we need to do is lock him out of the White House." You heard the word underdog a lot tonight, which at a place like the, the convention where everyone is sort of, you know, they're in their own choir and the preachers are all here trying to jazz everyone up. They're still putting that out there. Why do you think that is? Because of what happened to her in 2016. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, what Tortoise in the hair. She yeah. was round and it's like those Olympic videos you see where the runner thinks they have it, and then you see Trump coming around turn four and catching Hillary <laughs> no, eight years ago. So I think that's the thing is that keep your eyes on the target. There's only two ways to run, scared and unopposed. Always run mm -hmm. like you're 10 points down. Yeah. Fair. Fair. I and like, that, frankly, like that, that was the danger of, for our party a month ago. We we were running as if we were 10 points ahead, and maybe we were nearing yeah, it, but I mean, boy. A month ago was like 35 years ago at this <laughs> point in time. It was a whole different ticket. Don't, you know, we didn't know your show was coming that. yet. The Olympics was two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Trump is still fixated on Biden dropping out of the race. Yeah, because that was the playbook I had set up. <laughs> <laughs> and then y'all switch over. I don't know how to run against <laughs> Kamala. I don't Pretty good playbook. <laughs> Can't even pronounce her name right half the time. I, I do think that it was Biden's choice to choose whether or not to be pushed. Mm. So in essence, it was his choice. But you cannot, we've all had a job, and you know whether or not your coworkers like you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, Why are you staring you know, in my yeah, ass right well, now? I'm sorry. I, you all know. But the idea that the thing that I think that Biden is not getting enough credit for, whether or not he was pushed, mm -hmm. is that he's with it. When you look at what he did tonight, he's completely merging into traffic and going, go team, go, let's all get it done. Regardless of what's happening behind the scenes, he's not continuing to be a cog in the machine right now for the Democrats. That's a fascinating point because that was something that Republicans at their convention were hoping to accomplish, right? They were trying to suggest, everyone leave everything aside. We're, uni we're unified. Meanwhile, they wanted to have a split screen with the Democrats. It's just that they were not unified for precisely the reason you're talking about, about whether Biden should be on the ticket still. It sounds as, like, as though he understands the assignment in some respects, Jamal, that she's the top of the ticket. Coalescing has begun. Now you got 78 days to make it happen. I think he does understand that assignment because here's the thing. Donald Trump knew, watch this, he's a TV guy. He knew that he was supposed to have four uninterrupted days of television. And instead, he did have that split screen that you just mentioned. And it was all about the Democratic drama. At the end of the Democratic drama, we picked the new candidate. And that new candidate was fresh and everybody was happy and everybody was excited. And then she went out and found a partner. And now they have a buddy movie that's running around the country electrifying, and you know, crowds. People, he, he knows, the TV guy, that this is the worst possible outcome and there's no natural bend in the river coming up for mm -hmm. him to change the direction of the debate. And on top of all of that, you have Biden stepping down, you have Kamala and Waltz doing their thing out there on the campaign trail. Now you're getting a better president because he ain't got the stress of Nancy Pelosi sending him text messages at 2 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I think as we get through this week and we get past Labor Day, we're going to have a debate. And that debate is going to be one of the most important 
presidential debates, we've had maybe Bush Gore, if not Reagan Carter. It is going to potentially decide the outcome of this race, and I think it's a chance for both of these candidates uh, to really get their messaging right and to make the contrast that they want. And we saw a little bit of that today. I, I'm sure we'll hear more of it on Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday night, but that's going to be a determining factor um, in the seven battleground states and I think ultimately the race. So I, I think that is the contour and the fork in the road. If half of the stuff that he said on the trail about the vice president, if he says at the debate, she will dunk on him and it will be over. Like, he, he literally said, well, why is she on the cover of Time? I look better. <laughs> he basically called, that's like reverse calling somebody ugly. It's basically what he tried to do. And all Kamala has to do is flip that and go, look, I'm running for president, he's running for beauty queen. And just keep it moving. And she's quick like that. And I don't think that he's ready for that type of verbal sparring because once you get into the schoolyard name calling, this ain't Biden. 